as um, the m message for this week was going to be a very long one, like the scripture is a very long one, you know, seven days in God's time could be a really long time in the time of creation. It's more of a poetic account than a calendar account of the order of creation. And sometimes things that we think are gonna happen quickly take a long time to happen. But it is important to see that the happening is still happening underneath. That just because we can't see growth doesn't mean it's not happening. When I came home from conference, there was a beautiful hanging plant on my porch given to me by a friend, except it wasn't quite as beautiful. I'd only been away for three days, but those three days had been beautiful, sunny days, and no one had watered that plant for all three days, and all of it looked sort of like this. <laughs> and so I watered it, and a couple of hours later, I watered it a little more, because the first time I watered it, most of the water just you know, it was so dry it just came out the bottom anyways, it didn't even stay there to water the plant. And I watered it a little more, and a couple hours later I watered it a little more. I didn't know if it was gonna make it, to be honest with you, but this morning, when I went outside on my porch, my hanging plant was once again revived, revitalized, and looking healthy and declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sometimes that gift of water, as we are talking about from Casawasco or from our lake, or even from the, okay, I have a little sign next to my uh, bedside table, so after I brush my teeth and I'm ready to go to bed, it says, Sometimes courage doesn't roar. Sometimes it's that still small voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. This is the day that the Lord has made. We who are here have been revived by that water and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the last Sunday that I get to say anything before our confirmands have to make their decision on whether or not to publicly declare their faith in Jesus Christ and decide to unite with this body of faith and community of practice here at Lansing United. We have nine confirmands this year. Several of them have not been baptized, have not experienced that living water of Christ. And yet, even in that baptismal service, we say this is an outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual grace that God gives. Just because you haven't been baptized yet doesn't mean that God isn't already active in your life. And they told us at conference that we shouldn't use words like prevenient grace in our sermon, so I won't say anything about that. But God is already active, and I am excited for the ways that God is active through the young people, and you will hear their faith stories, or just a teeny tiny bit of it next week. And then the week after that, you'll have a chance to hear from some of our um, graduating high school seniors and hear a little bit about how this church family has been important on their journey of faith. And um, I'm excited about that as well. So um, I promised this would be really short, but I have to preach just a little bit. So will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts, those who agree with me and those who find these words hard to hear, may they all be acceptable in your sight. For you are our one God, our triune God, our rock and our redeemer, our sustainer, the one who parts the waters and leads us through even when waters are choppy. And now, dear God, either through me or in spite of me, speak the word that your people who are listening today need to hear. Amen. So the reason that I said that this is an amazing scripture to be assigned for this Sunday, in my mind at least, 
is about one little thing. It's about something called pronouns. You may have heard, and I am so grateful to Ed Levine for stepping in when Deb could not be here this morning. Not only did he just agree to step in, he also copied down the scripture by hand, knowing his pastor well enough to know that I probably wouldn't have printed it out for him yet when he got here. And I said, oh, I'm going to do that. And he said, I gotcha. I am so grateful for all the ways that folks in this congregation have helped me through in times when, oh, I haven't gotten to that yet. It is one of those things where it truly takes more than one person to be the body of Christ together. In the version that Ed read, there were several pronouns referring to God. When Chris read our scripture, he, Chris, um, went through and replaced the pronoun he for God with God. If we were to do that in the scripture that Ed read and replace God, wherever it said he, there would still be a couple places where God had a pronoun. The pronoun that's there is in the verse where God talks about making human beings. It says, let us make human beings in our image. Male and female, let us make them. And from this small little piece of scripture that's been there since thousands of years ago, I want to tell you that in my mind, God was the very first they, them. That God is bigger than just one thing. The God that you know, I am not trying to take away from you in any sense of the word. I want you to know that that God is even bigger than you think. No matter how long you've known that God, there are still sides of that God that you have not yet experienced. And there are still places in your life where God wants to be there with you. And so I have um, some stickers this morning, and I think that our um, ushers have a reverse offering. You don't have to take one. If it makes you uncomfortable, you don't need it. But um, it does say, God, the original, they, them. And it's a holographic sticker, one of those that, you know, you're not sure exactly where it is when you look at it because it's a hologram. Um, but those are going to be passed around in the offering plates. And if you would like one, you're welcome to one. If you would prefer not to have one, you are welcome to not have one. And God is okay with that, and I am okay with that. But I wanted to make them available to those of you who might want to have one. And I wanted to say that this was an amazing annual conference and that I am very excited for the future of our United Methodist Church, which is much bigger than you think that it is. Um, so um, with that, I'm going to invite Sandy Dimitri to come forward and report on annual conference. And those of you who remember it, along with those of you who don't, I invite you to stand as we sing something we haven't sung in a long, long time, an old praise be to God song that names God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's called the Gloria Patri, glory be to God in all of God's forms. Amen. Amen. 